Hello people, in this video we want to look at Wilms tumor. Wilms tumor is also called as nephroblastoma. So you guessed it, it is something to do with the nephrons, the kidney. So here we will be looking at the histopathology of Wilms tumor. It usually affects children. It's an embryonal tumor, so it affects children. See what in all tumors affects the kidneys. The kidney can have a lot of tumors like epithelial tumors, uh, epithelial tumors of the renal parenchyma, epithelial tumors of the renal pelvis, embryonal tumors and non-epithelial tumors. So now here we are embryonal tumors. So in embryonal tumors you have the benign condition and the malignant condition. Wilms tumor is a malignant condition. So it is cancer. Wilms tumor is a um, malignant neoplasm of the kidney. It is an embryonal tumor, so the embryonal tissue or the primitive tissue is uh, seen. So as it is embryonal tumor, you can expect children of, zero, of very young age to get it. So is this much clear? Guys, so pay attention here. What are we looking at today? Today we are looking at Wilms tumor. Wilms tumor is also called as nephroblastoma right so it is affecting the kidney it's an embryonal malignant tumor of kidney so it affects children right how many people understood all these terms very good let's move on so Wilms tumor is also called as nephroblastoma it's an embryonal tumor so you can see it in children one to six years so basically here the primitive renal epithelium and mesenchymal components. The tumor is derived from primitive renal epithelium and mesenchymal components. That's why it's called embryonal tumor. Some primitive tissues involved here. So you will see it in whom? In children because it's an embryonal tumor. But the good thing is the cure rates are very high for Wilms tumor, 85% currently. It represents one of the greatest success of pediatric oncology, guys. Okay, let's move on. Clinical features, how will a child present with this? There will be an abdominal mass, which may be unilateral or large. It could be bilateral also in very few people. There will be hematuria. That means there will be blood and urine, pain in the abdomen after some trauma. Intestinal obstruction can be there. Hypertension can be there. And it can metastasize to the lungs. So there can be pulmonary metastasis, metastasis at the time of presentation in primary diagnosis. So guys, what are we talking about now? We finished what and all? We finished the clinical features, right? And we saw that it is one of the greatest success in pediatric oncology. Very good. So now moving on, why does this happen? Etiopathogenesis. Basically, you can look at this. Very general things you will write are genetics, monozygotic twins, congenital anomalies. It can be there along with other congenital anomalies. It can be there along with other malignancies. Now coming to genetics, very specifically, you have to mention this. Wilms tumor is caused because of mutation to the Wilms tumor 1 gene. So easy, right? Wilms tumor is caused because of the mutation to Wilms tumor 1 gene, which is located on chromosome. Which one? 11. 1, 1, 1. Everything is 1 here. Wilms tumor 1 gene located on chromosome 11. This Wilms tumor 1 gene is actually a very good gene. It is a tumor suppressor gene, but this one gets mutated. And what happens is uh, it leads to Wilms tumor. Okay, now what did you understand? There is a chromosome 11, right? On this chromosome 11, there's some Wilms tumor gene, right? And this is Wilms tumor 1 gene. This is a good gene. This gets mutated and becomes a bad guy, okay? So actually, this is a tumor suppressor gene. It is uh, actually helping in the synthesis of a protein which is required for the development of kidney and gonads. So pay attention here. It's not only helping in the development of kidney. It is also helping in the development of gonads. So if this person has kidney problem, he can have gonadal problem also. You understood? Or if he has gonadal problem, he can have kidney problem also. Why? Because this WT1 gene is affected. So, so now pay attention here to what is called as a WAGR syndrome, Wager syndrome, WAGR syndrome. W represents Wilms tumor, A represents an iridia. An iridia means the person has no iris. Iris is where in the eye? Genitourinary abnormalities and mental retardation. So these four things will be together. What and all? Wilms tumor, obviously genitourinary anomalies because you know it helps in the development of the gonads. There can be mental retardation and an aniridia. That means the person has no iris. So guys, what did you see now? WAGR syndrome. What is this WAGR syndrome? Wilms tumor, aniridia. Genitourinary problems and mental retardation. So all these can be seen together. So the chromosome affected is which one? 11, chromosome 11. 
Now let us look at the other things. There can be a Dennis Drash syndrome in which there can be Willem's tumor. These people have gonoidal dysgenesis and these people are also at high risk for Wilms tumor because looks like the same thing is affected here. The gonadal dysgenesis, definitely the tumor, uh, the kidney can get affected. Is this clear? Dennis Dash syndrome, Drash. Dennis Drash syndrome. Dennis Drash syndrome. Another thing they have seen is um, now they have observed that there is some mutation between the beta catenin pathway and the wingless signaling pathway, WNT pathway, this mutation can lead to sporadic cases of Wilms tumor. Okay, so what is it? Beta catenin and WNT pathway. What is it? Beta catenin and WNT pathway. So somewhere here some mutation which can lead to Wilms tumor, sporadic cases of Wilms tumor. So this completes the etiopathogenesis of Wilms tumor. So what will you tell somebody if they say etiopathogenesis? All the general stuff you can say like congenital anomalies, malignancies, monozygotic twins, etc. But remember to say WT1 gene located on chromosome 11 <clears throat> can get mutated. This WT1 gene was responsible for the synthesis of proteins which was helping in the development of kidney and gonads. So these people can have a WAR uh, WAGR, Wager syndrome, where there can be Wilms tumor and iridia, gonad, the genitourinary anomalies and mental retardation. Okay, you should say without seeing guys, Wilms tumor and iridia, genitourinary anomalies and mental retardation. Okay, so that one, then you will say that there can be a Dennis Drash syndrome where there's gonadal dysgenesis. These people are at higher risk to develop Wilms tumor. And also there can be a mutation between the beta catenin pathway and the WNT signaling pathway. Now grossly what will you see in Wilms tumor? So now we are moving on to the gross guys. Wake up. Now we are moving on to the gross of Wilms tumor nephroblastoma. See you can understand why it is called blastoma right? Because the primitive cells are involved. It is an embryonal uh, tumor. So obviously the primitive cells are involved. So the blasts that's why they are calling it as nephroblasts. Okay. So grossly what you have to know is uh, it is uh, the tumor is large because you know we said abdominal mass is one of the clinical features correct so uh, what will happen usually it is solitary and unilateral only one kidney is affected usually but bilateral can be affected when you cut it you will see fish flesh like white to cream yellow tumor see doesn't it look like a cut fish yes something like that right soft fish flesh like it can be then uh, there can be invasion into the renal vein. So into the renal vein there can be invasion. So there can be invasion into the renal vein. Okay, renal vein can get invaded. So what extra things you will write here that you will write for all the gross hemorrhage, necrosis, everything, those standard things. And you always write gray, white, uh, gray, white, uh, yellowish, creamy, yellow, gray, white, hemorrhage, necrosis. These are standard things you write for all the grosses, remember. But other than this fillers, what you will write? Fish flesh like, soft, invasion into renal vein, right? Those are important. Now we will move on guys to the microscopy. In microscopy, what will you see? It is so easy. Primitive epithelial and mesenchymal elements because you know it's embryonal tumor. You will see primitive epithelial and mesenchymal elements. What will you see? In Wilms tumor microscopy, you will see primitive epithelial and mesenchymal components. Now look at this. There are abortive tubules and poorly formed glomerular structures. Obviously because it was trying to develop the kidney, the kidney is not able to develop because the proteins that this WT1 gene was making, they are not available. Kidney is not developing properly. The tubules are not developed properly. The glomerular structures are not developed properly, obviously. Now coming to the cells that you find. This is something that you will have to remember. Some spindle cells, spindle cells are there. Then um, anaplastic cells are there. Sarcomoid tumor cells are there. Try to remember, otherwise move on. You can see some mesenchymal elements like smooth muscle, skeletal muscle, cartilage, bone, fat cells, fibrous tissue. This is what is like strange, right? You're going to see smooth muscle, skeletal muscle in the kidney and you will see bone and cartilage in the kidney. You will see fat cells, fibrous tissue in the kidney. Interesting. And this is not even any uh, teratoma. The basic thing here, it is a nephroblastoma. Primitive cells are involved so it can form into 
smooth muscle, skeletal muscle, cartilage, bone, fat, fibrous tissue, etc. This is very strange, right? So here's a picture of uh, Wilms tumor under the microscope. You can know it is kidney, right? You can see a lot of glomerular structures here, right? Let us go to the microscopy that we have drawn in our college. Not so difficult. Uh, pay attention here. It's kind of dull. Look at this. There are epithelial components, blastemal components and stromal components. Epithelial components, you have abortive tubule, abortive glomerulus. So you have it tried to develop a tubule, it's not able to develop abortive tubule. Try to develop a glomerulus, not able to develop abortive glomerulus. So here is your abortive tubule, here is your abortive glomerulus. Draw these two epithelial components. Then coming to blastemal components, you have these cells. What are these cells? You can see more nucleus than cytoplasm. So these are primitive cells, they have scanty cytoplasm. That's all, blastemal components. They are blast cells, they have some primitive components. But here you can see more of nucleus, less of cytoplasm. It's a tumor, obviously. You will see hyperchromatic nuclei, all that, right? Now coming to stromal component, what will you see here? You are seeing a lot of fibroblasts, okay? So in the fibro, uh, in the stroma, you will see a lot of fibroblasts. So that these are the only three things you have to draw in the Wilms tumor microscopy. So guys, uh, have you understood the Wilms tumor microscopy? So if you are asked to draw Wilms tumor microscopy, what you will do? You will draw an abortive tubule, abortive glomerulus, lot of uh, primitive cells which have very less cytoplasm but lot of hypochromatic uh, enlarged nucleus right and then in the stroma you will draw a lot of fibroblasts that's it so these three if you draw you have got Wilms tumor microscopy let's take a recap what we have seen so far that completes Wilms tumor Wilms tumor is also called as nephroblastoma it is an embryonal tumor. It's a malignant embryonal tumor. So it affects children. One to six years you will see peak incidences. Q rates are very high. That's a good thing. So clinical features will be abdominal, mass, unilateral or uh, mostly unilateral. They'll be, they can be hematuria, pain in the abdomen, intestinal obstruction, hypertension. This Wilms tumor can metastasize to the lung, so there can be pulmonary metastasis at the time of presentation. Etiopathogenesis, we saw that uh, standard stuff, uh, twins present along with other congenital anomalies, present along with other malignancies. Genetics, uh, Wilms tumor 1 gene present on chromosome 11 is mutated. Wilms tumor 1 gene is a tumor suppressor. It helps in making proteins that are... Uh, going to help in the development of the kidney and the gonads. Uh, this, these people usually come with a combination of symptoms can be there like Wilms tumor and iridia, genitourinary anomalies and mental retardation. That is called as the WAGR syndrome. <coughs> then there can be Dynas Drash syndrome, which you can see in Wilms, uh, they will have high risk to Wilms tumor. This Dennis Drash syndrome is uh, nothing but gonadal dysgenesis. Okay. Then some people can have a mutation in the beta catenin pathway and the WNT signaling pathway which can lead to Wilms tumor. Grossly you will see that it is large, solitary, unilateral mass can be there. When you cut it you can see soft fish flesh like, grey white, cream yellow, with foci of necrosis, hemorrhage etc. There can be invasion of the renal vein. Renal vein, into the renal vein there can be invasion. Into the renal vein there can be invasion. Okay. Coming to the microscopy, you will see that you will see primitive epithelium. You will see abortive tubules, poorly formed glomerular structures. And these tumor cells can be spindle, anaplastic, sarcomoid, etc. And you can find a lot of mesenchymal elements, not just epithelial. You can find mesenchymal elements like uh, uh, muscle, skeletal muscle, smooth muscle, bone, cartilage, fat cells, fibrous tissue. Okay. Coming to the drawing, how you would draw it, you have to draw three components here, epithelial component, blastemal component and stromal component with the fibroblast. So draw a lot of abortive tubules and glomeruli, a lot of uh, cells here which are primitive cells which can be spindled, anaplastic, what was that? Spindled anaplastic sarcomoid tumor cells, okay. Then you will draw the fibroblasts, that's all. So that completes Wilms tumor, uh, histology, pathology, gross, etc. 
So we will meet you in the next video. Hope you enjoyed this video. Take rest. Bye-bye.